It's a great question. Um, so the, this trade war and resulting tensions from both sides is not really a new topic. We've really seen some worsening international relations over the last couple of years, as I think most audience is familiar. And leading up to the U.S. presidential election in November, it's very difficult to predict what will happen. Um, our observations here on the ground is that really for um, the practical day-to-day -day deal making world, there hasn't been so much practical impact. Uh, this idea that there's escalating tensions does linger in everyone's mind, and it makes us all do just several layers of additional diligence before we launch into an investment effort. So uh, really, it's two factors. One is whether or not the underlying technology is covered under the CFIUS firma legislation. And if it is covered under that legislation, then how do we structure the deal such that the foreign investor does not have a control stake, particularly when it pertains to obtaining IP? So those are just a couple of those considerations that we have to consider now, but we didn't have to consider before. But the second part of your question, which is uh, whether or not China is still a dominant market for VC, it still is the dominant market. Um, I think the size of the China market will not diminish just because there's escalating tensions right now. So what we find is uh, investors, LPs, and corporate partners alike, people still are very interested in this region. It just maybe takes a couple of layers of caution before doing some kind of equity deal. Sure. Um, so COVID-19, um, you know, there's kind of two layers here. One is specifically for healthcare and biotech in particular. It hasn't necessarily been a negative impact. Um, I think that that was surprising to us in the beginning of this year, but as we observe the landscape, maybe it's not so surprising. After all, the solution to a pandemic is biotech. It's uh, better therapeutics and better vaccines. So we've actually seen more deal flow than ever before. I would say our deal team is screening anywhere uh, north of 1.5 to even two times more deals than we were before. And it is a, a very um, hot time to be investing in this sector. So from a sector perspective, I actually don't think uh, healthcare or biotech is negatively impacted. Uh, the other angle is, of course, operational. So the companies that we've already invested in, uh, they're absolutely impacted by COVID, but I would say um, to varying levels of degree. So uh, first of all, ge geographic, um, if you look at what happened in China, really only quarter one was severely impacted. And luckily, with all the stringent controls, operationally, companies actually were back to normal by quarter two. In the U.S., uh, very difficult to tell what will happen. The impact has lasted at least three quarters, if not a little bit more. Um, really, the, the biggest impact is probably in clinical trials. And yet, when we speak to our portfolio companies, they have been very nimble and found ways to, to really work around the challenges. So one very classic example is COVID impacts the intensive care unit for obvious reasons. There's a lot of ICU capacity that is constrained by COVID patients. Um, so that makes our companies want to pursue trials at specialty clinics who are maybe seeing only cancer patients or only dementia patients, et cetera. So there are ways that companies can work around it. Um, of course, it's top of mind for everyone, so there absolutely is impact, but we've been very happy to see the companies working so nimbly around the challenges. Uh, sure. So um, I think the challenges remain the same as they were before. Uh, the biggest bottleneck in our industry um, is probably talent. There's a lot of great ideas. Um, and there are great entrepreneurs, but right now, the amount of work to be done, I think, still outpaces the number of entrepreneurs. So we're very eager for the China biomedical landscape to one day look like the U.S., and I think it will catch up very soon, where there are zero entrepreneurs, people that have created multiple companies before, uh, that would probably be uh, one type of very rare talent today that will be in more abundance later. Uh, and of course, there's a, a rising kind of mid-senior tier management um, that was very scarce about 10 years ago. Today, we're seeing great improvements in, in those ranks, but uh, it just takes time you know, for people and, and for the entire industry to grow. When LFU just started investing a little over 12 years ago, the, the talent was very, very scarce, and it's been increasing by 30% per year on average. Uh, so we do see a lot of improvement, but that probably is the, the number one bottleneck for the deals that we do. Uh, sure. So I, uh, LAV is pretty specialized. We do 80% um, of our investing in biotech. So I, I can really only speak for biotech. 
Uh, it's been an incredible time for biotech in China. There's multiple waves of companies starting from, as I mentioned, about 12, 13 years ago, the first wave of companies truly launching products. Uh, most of them were fast follow on drugs. And today you have companies even out licensing their assets to global multinational pharma companies. So what that really means is China is now, as a biomedical industry, uh, producing products that are fit for the global stage. We're extremely excited about that. Um, the second question that folks often ask is within biotech, is there going to be a lot of first in class innovation? So the very first of a certain type of drug launched here. Uh, that is another trend that we're seeing uh, as high potential for the next 10 years. So far, it hasn't happened in great abundance yet, but we think that that will be the, the next trend to watch for the next decade.